Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Welcome back to another morning motivation, Monday morning. I hope you all had a nice sleep last night. I did. I slept really well. My lighting is going in and out. Here we go again. I don't know what's going on, but it's blacking out. So hopefully, hopefully you can see me well. This morning, I want to talk about um, husbands and how you all are responsible for your wives as the head of the household, okay? What God expects from you, okay? Now, if you believe in the God, the one true living God, that's the creator of all heaven and the earth, then I'm talking about the same God you're talking about. I'm not talking about any other God before him. I'm talking about the one true God that created the heavens and the earth, okay? That's the one I'm talking about. So, if you're a non-believer, um, if you're a Christian or a Muslim, you know, there's one thing that we should all have in common, and that's how to treat your spouse and how to treat other human beings. Whatever religion you are, whatever belief you are, there's one thing that we should all have in common is how to treat other people, especially your spouse, okay? Because you don't want to harm the person who's supposed to have your back, and you should have their back. No one should come in between you all. It says who God has joined together. Let no man, nobody, no woman, boy, or girl put asunder. Your wife should come first. Your husband should come first. And I'm going to touch on the wives too, but not this morning. Maybe Wednesday because I'm going to do men today and tomorrow and then women Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm going to talk to the women too what our responsibility is as women to our husbands you know, or your future husband or your future wife. If you don't have one right now, you want to go into the marriage the right way. Okay. You, sh you, you want to go into it the right way. You don't want to end up in divorce. So we're going to start with, I have her in my life. I was married before and my husband would always say, well, I did A, B, and C because you made me do it. You know, the way you responded to me and, and the way you act, you made me do A, B, and C. You made me not do this. You made me. Everything, his behaviors, his negative behaviors were always on me. He held my behaviors responsible for his behaviors. But not so. That's not what God does. Everyone is held responsible for their own behaviors. And it's no matter how, I took some notes. No matter how your wife responds, you are responsible for how you show her love. God will not hold you responsible for her actions. He's only going to show you, hold you responsible for your actions. Excuse me. He doesn't hold anyone else responsible for anyone else's actions. So you can't go home and say, well, I laid out of work or I cheated or I did A, B, and C because of your responsibilities. He's just not going to do that. He does not hold you responsible for your wife's actions. He's going to hold you responsible for how you respond to her because she's the weaker vessel. You're stronger than her. It doesn't mean what you can lift in weights. When it says you're stronger, that's true, but you're stronger. You're supposed to pick up the slack. You're there. She's supposed to lean on you. He made you the stronger vessel. She's the weaker vessel. You know? So when it comes to physically bullying and beating her upside her head, that's not what God expects because he doesn't beat you upside your head, okay? It says here, 1 Timothy 3 and 2, therefore an overseer must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. You can't be the head of the household if you're drunk, you don't have no self-control. You're not respectable. You're not hospitable. You can't tell nobody nothing. You want your wife to respect you, but you have to do things too. Now, I don't know what the Quran says or the Torah says. I'm sure they, they have some different teachers in there about how to treat your wife. And they're probably good teachers. I don't know because I, I'm not into that book. I'm into the Bible. But you have to be an overseer is the head of the house. It's not just the overseer in a church. And if you are in the church, you still have to have these qualities. 
You can't lead anybody and be over somebody if you don't have good qualities yourself. You can't go run a church or run a household, but you're not doing the things you're supposed to do. You're fighting, you're cussing, you're drunk. You don't pay bills. You want to run around and stay out all night. You have to be sober-minded and have one wife and be above reproach where nobody can't find any fault in you and come back and say, well, you telling me not to do this. See, that's what happened with me and my first, my last husband. He would do something. I would come back and say, well, you did A, B, and C. He couldn't argue that because he's trying to tell me something and I'm telling him. I didn't have any respect for him because he didn't have these qualities. He didn't have these qualities. So I couldn't respect them. So when he would come and tell me I did something, I would come back and rebuttal him. Because he wasn't above reproach. I could, I could confront him. Because he wasn't where he's supposed to be as a husband. It's not where I'm supposed to be. The Lord can take care of the wife. He says he's not going to hold you responsible for how the wife responds to you. That's not your problem. You do your part, and then the Lord will take care of the part with the woman. It's not your responsibility to slap her in the mouth or don't pay the mortgage, go out and creep. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is do what you would want someone else to do to you. Okay? In Ephesians, Ephesians 5.33, However, let one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Okay? So the Lord wants you to love your wife. If you love your wife the way you're supposed to love your wife, she will respect you. Okay? She will show you the utmost respect if you're treating her the way you're supposed to treat her. Now, everyone that's married to somebody, that's not supposed to be your spouse. So if you're doing everything you possibly can and you're above reproach and she doesn't respect you, then she may not be the one that's supposed to be with you. Because the word of God says what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. He has not joined everyone together. If you are looking for a husband, you need to look for these qualities, women. It tells you what the husband is supposed to be. Have one wife. Be above reproach. Sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach you, able to lead you. That's what a head of a household is. Not busting me in the gut, throwing me down the flight of stairs, drunk all over the couch, cussing, knocking televisions off the wall. That's not what the qualities of a husband is supposed to be. Okay? It says, Peter 3 and 7, likewise, husbands... Live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are co-heirs with you, or the of the grace of life, of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Honor, that's respect, okay? Since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. When you disrespect your wife and don't treat your wife as an equal, your prayers are being hindered. He is not going to answer not one of your prayers. Have you ever realized that I've been praying for a better job? I've been praying, Lord, for this. Father God, I've been asking you for this. I'm talking to the men. And nothing's never happened. You wind up right back in the same spot you started from. That's because you are not showing your wife honor as the weaker vessel. And treating her as an heir, a co-heir. A co-heir is your side by side, your co. You're the heir to the grace of life. And she's just as equal a heir to the grace of life. Don't treat her that you're above her. That's not what the head of the household is. You have to lead your wife, but you are equals. You don't look down on your wife and mistreat your wife. That's not scripture. And women, if you're looking for a husband, he needs to have these qualities. If you get a husband that have these qualities, your marriage will last if you are willing to respect him and do what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to get back with you all too at a later date. Colossians 3.19, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. 
Do not be harsh with them. You think being harsh is just hitting. That is being harsh. Kicking and spitting in somebody's face. I know men who spit in women's faces. That's not love. That's not the head of the house. Being harsh also is just, just plain not right, blatant disrespect. You make all the decisions. You don't include your wife in anything. That's harsh because it hurts her heart. It breaks her spirit because you treat her with dishonor and disrespect. That's harsh too. That's harsh too. It don't have to be you throwing her around and pulling her hair. Harsh is just disrespecting her. And I'm going by the Bible. I'm giving you scriptures. It's not my words. It's God's words. I've been doing research because I didn't even know this was in here. Okay? I know I've read it, but you know it don't stick when you feel like that's not pertaining to you. And if this is not pertaining to you, do not take it for yourself. I'm giving it to people who may not know and they're doing the opposite and they want to know why why their marriage is not working and why their wife is kicking back and fighting back and disrespecting and leaving them and 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 a lot of times you know you have this custom in other places other countries and so men here in america that feel like to keep the wife in place they gotta whoop on them and beat on them and things like that but just as soon as they leave and find some freedom they're going to leave you if you think that your wife is staying with you and you don't punch her in the mouth because she loves you, she's only there out of fear. That's not love. That's not respect. That's not honor on either side. She's going to leave as soon as she gets a chance if she don't kill you first. Okay? I had a boyfriend years ago who thought that taking my keys to my car and taking my shoes and locking me in my apartment would keep me with him. Okay, I went to work on a Friday morning. He told me Thursday night what he was going to do. It was my apartment with my name on the lease. I let homeboy have it. I didn't go back. Eventually, he left and I went back to my apartment. But I left. I went after work. I, I didn't go back home. You're not going to take my shoes and my keys and my car. And think you're going to lock me up all weekend. God knows what he was planning on doing. Probably going to beat my tail all weekend long. Because people think that's what they're supposed to do. That's not biblical. Nowhere in here it says beat your wife. And slap her. And, 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 and step on her. Nowhere. It says you are co-heirs. You are heirs, both of you, to the grace of life. Since they are heirs with you. With. Not since they are heirs under you. Not since they are heirs behind you. With. That's side by side. Co. You and your co-worker. We are helpmates. We are your co-workers. You don't make decisions and things by yourself. And then things come out wrong. You don't do that. It says here in Ephesians 5.25. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. And gave himself up for her. A lot of men don't realize that you're supposed to give your life for your wife. You're supposed to lay down your life. You're supposed to be the stronger person that can take anything that comes your way. And you are supposed to protect your wife. And it means laying down your life. Then you just lay down your life if that's what it means. If that's what it takes. You're supposed to throw yourself in front of your wife and protect her. She's the weaker vessel. And it doesn't mean mentally weaker. It just means... I have a strong personality, okay? I have a strong mind. But the man's supposed to be stronger. He made you stronger in power and in might and in, in, in your mind. You should be stronger. That don't mean that you have to be smarter than me and think I'm dumb. But just when it comes to making decisions and running a household, we are co, we do it together. But you are the stronger person. If things start going awry and we can't pay our bills that month because of circumstances beyond our control, I start freaking out. You are the man. If you're going to freak out, I shouldn't see you freaking out. You should be the stronger, you the stronger person. I'm the weaker vessel. I get emotional. I cry. I don't understand things. You are supposed to be there to be the stronger vessel. Cry in your car. Like the boy on Friday, he said he going to cry in the car. <laughs> when he went running back, when Debo stole his necklace, you cry in the car. You don't cry in front of me. You cry in the car, especially if I'm crying. It don't mean, it don't need both us freaking out. You are the stronger vessel. I know people think, well, a man should be able to cry. I'm not saying a man can't cry. 
That's not what I'm saying. A lot of women be like, a man should be sensitive. He should be able to cry. He shouldn't be having a hole in his... I'm not saying hole in your emotion or hole in your tears. I'm saying that the word of God says that we are the weaker vessels. So when you see us break down, when you see us get emotional, when you see us crying and we are unstable, you are the stronger person. You need to stand up at that particular time. I'm not saying you're not going to cry. I'm not saying that I can't comfort my husband. I'm not saying that because it will come a time when you will have to comfort your husband's women because life get hard. Okay? But... Remember, the woman is the weaker vessel. You don't need to be sitting over in the corner crying all day long and I'm running the household. But you want me to respect you as a husband. That's not the way it go. He gives you your guidelines for a successful marriage. You will have some stumbling blocks along the way. But if you are doing these things, then your marriage should be, you should be, have a successful marriage. It says if you don't listen to your wife, God won't listen to you. Your prayers are being hindered because you're not doing what you're supposed to do with your wife, you know? So you should be, be a man, but don't bully a daughter of God under the guise of your masculinity. God doesn't appreciate it at all. In fact, he says that if you can't understand your wife is a co-heir of the grace of life, your prayers are hindered. You have to remember that a lot of your prayers are not being answered, gentlemen, because of the way you're treating your spouse. And I'm talking about women and men spouses. That's what I'm talking about. I don't have, I'm not talking about a, a homosexual relationship. I'm not putting you all down. I'm not doing any of that. I'm talking strictly the word of God, husband and wife. Okay. Women and men. That's what I'm talking about. I don't have nothing. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm talking about women and men. Husbands. A husband is a man. He was born a man. Respect your wife, okay? Honor your wife. Honor her. And she is to respect you. You want women to respect you. You have to do your part, okay? So I'm going to come back tomorrow with part two. And then Wednesday and Thursday, I will talk to us women. Because this is for me too. Because I'm telling you what. I don't have a problem busting a man in his mouth. And I should not have to feel that way. But I've been disrespected. And I have not had a husband in the past. In the past. Who had these qualities. I have not had that. Okay. I have not. So I don't have a problem arguing with a man and standing up in a man's face. I don't have, I didn't have the respect. I have it now, but I didn't have it then. Let's put it like that. When I was with my last husband, I, from that point, from my last husband on back, I didn't have that respect for men. I do now. I watch my mouth. I watch how I talk. You know, I try to respect them. I still have some little things in me that I can change. Yes, I do. I'm independent. I'm used to that because I was trained that way from childhood on up to my relationships. I've had to run the house. I paid the bills, you know. I got the man pants on. I was doing everything. And a woman does not want that, gentlemen. A woman wants a strong man that can go out here and pay bills and don't ask me when the light bill is due. When I flip a switch, I want my lights to come on. Cut my lights back on. I don't want to be walking in here and flipping a switch and I can't get no lights because you didn't pay the bill. But it's all on me. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. That's not being a stronger person. That's being a weaker vessel. You don't change spots with me. When you, you don't change spots. You don't change roles. When I'm running a whole household and you just sitting to the side. And a lot of times... People, men will say, you just take over. You don't let me do nothing. A, real, a woman can't take over a man's spot unless he gives it up. He cannot. If you're the stronger person and, and, and a weaker person, that's like me and my and Stacy. I'm the stronger vessel. Stacy is the weaker vessel. How can Stacy just take over my house? I have to let Stacy tear up and claw my furniture. I have to let her knock over my stuff. So a woman can't take over a man's spot unless he just steps back willingly and become the weaker vessel and she's the stronger vessel, okay? Just because you have a woman with a strong personality don't mean 
that she can take over. If you are a man and a man that you're supposed to be in your right, that's not going to happen. But you can do it with love and kindness, not whooping up on somebody. Okay? So I'll be back with part two tomorrow. I hope you all enjoyed it. Y'all have a wonderful Monday. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Choose.